Until one day, about one year ago from today, I felt my least confident I think I'd ever felt when walking around with a camera. I was terrified to lift my camera up to my eye to be seen to take a photo of someone, let alone getting close or even speaking to someone. Today though, I feel much more confident. And sure, this is through regular practice, but I think that one day a year ago is when that shift first started. Welcome to Manchester. Weather, rainy, windy, grey. Specifically, welcome to Islington Wharf in Ancoats. This marina is very different to much of Manchester. It's a quiet spot for people to relax, filled with dogs, graphic designers, and uh, people living on canal boats. When I first moved here two years ago, Islington Wharf was like a surprising spot that I'd often walk through when exploring the city. At the time, I genuinely felt overwhelmed by having moved to a city centre, like living right in the middle of the city. So this quieter spot that I would sometimes wander through felt like a breath of fresh air, and it was one of the many places I'd walk through with a camera around my shoulder, terrified to lift it up to my eye. Instead, I would head home with empty SD cards and empty rolls of film. I want to give a quick thank you to Surrey for sending me their Nightwalker lenses. I really enjoyed using the 24, 35 and 55mm lenses when shooting this Islington Wharf sequence. Anyway, back to the video. Around a year after I'd first moved to Manchester, I received a message from another creator on YouTube. It was James who started Underexposed, the YouTube channel. He is also a photographer in the north of England and he was starting a YouTube channel featuring other photographers who hadn't had much exposure up in the north. And he asked me if I wanted to feature in one of the early episodes on the channel. At the time, I was not feeling super confident walking around with my camera at all. I wasn't really filming myself while I was out shooting, but the invitation from James felt like a good opportunity to experiment and see if this slightly different experience would have a good effect on my photography. So in the spirit of shaking things up, I accepted James's invitation. Okay, let's go. After James and I met for the first time and he mic'd me up and we started shooting, I just went full send and committed to shooting in a different style to I'd ever really shot before. I just focused for the entire time we were filming to shoot all 24 exposures of this smaller HP5 roll and focus primarily on people and their dogs. We walked around Northern Quarter, Ancoats and Islington Wharf and that's where I shot a couple of my favourite images from this day. But it wasn't the images themselves that helped me get out of my creative rut. It was something else that I couldn't have expected. A couple of days after we shot, I got my film scans back from Come Through Lab in Manchester and James sent me through some of the footage so I could use it in YouTube videos, which you've no doubt seen extensively. The reason I asked James for the footage was so that I could be able to use it in showing the images that I shot that day. When I was taking photos of these dogs in Manchester, it was fun to be able to have the behind the scenes of how I got the shot and how I approached the people. But the after effects of doing this actually caught me by surprise and this wasn't my original intention. What I saw was myself actually engaging with people when I was shooting. And not only that, I saw those situations going well. Not just okay, but some of them going really well. And when I watched that footage, I realized that's me. That means I can do that and I can do that again. I'm not bad at it. In fact, I might even be okay at it so I should do more of it. In my head at the time, I thought as you might that these interactions can only go badly. I'm only going to upset people. This is going to ruin my day and their day if it goes badly. Now, I do think that most of us think we're worse with people than we actually are because I think everyone thinks the same thing. So when you make an effort to engage with someone and be polite and have a good interaction with someone, in fact, you're the one making the effort that the other person wishes they could make. Especially, I think, for people practicing street photography, I think we become this kind of recluse observer that ends up kind of just making our jobs harder for us than it really needs to be. In my mind, when I've thought about this, I've often likened it to the scene from The King's Speech, if you know it, the one with Colin Firth. And it's the scene in which Colin Firth's character is struggling with his stutter and he can't speak. And then Jeffrey Rush asks him to put on some headphones to be able to block out the sound of his own voice while he reads some Shakespeare. And in doing so, he manages to speak much more fluidly and reduces his stutter to near zero. And while of course the principles here are not a direct comparison, but weirdly in being able to see yourself doing the thing that scares you from another perspective and realizing, oh my God, that's me on camera doing the thing I'm scared of. 
it does something to your subconscious that you suddenly realise, I shouldn't be scared of it because it didn't go badly. And in fact, I'm not that bad at doing it. You would think that being filmed would make you more self-conscious, but in this scenario, somehow it made me less self-conscious in the process. I've also recently been using an action camera for the first time in ages to be able to record some of my street photography walks. And this is because I enjoyed having someone there to be able to record some behind the scenes, but I didn't want to bother someone all the time. So wearing an action camera felt like a necessary evil. And in fact, I've actually not minded wearing it as much because the benefits I've got from it are more than I expected. The first benefit is actually the ability to replay an interaction. So whether it's me actually asking permission or me taking a candid and me seeing how I could have actually placed myself better in that situation, gotten closer, changed the angle. Maybe I sometimes notice a subject in the background of the shot that I didn't notice on the spot. I'm not comparing street photography to professional sports here, but that is something that professional athletes do. They will replay things to see how their form was and how they could have improved. Trying to record though, Paul. And I think actually doing this in street photography is something that I did not expect to be beneficial, but it has meant that the next time I actually head out or when I'm walking around the street without my camera, my observations are, have been changed a little bit. I'm noticing things that I might not have noticed before I did this. There's a couple more things that I'd like to share with you, especially if you relate to this video and the path that I've been on that I've described. The first one is something I have mentioned in the past, and it is this book that I'm gonna show you in B-roll uh, by Dawood Bey on photographing people and communities. This book is a book that I came across a bit later than really I needed it, but it's super helpful in terms of understanding the impact you can have on both subjects and like wider stories when it comes to photographing people either on the street and working with them to create more interesting images and also going a bit deeper to create portrait projects. That's not something I'm particularly interested in doing at the moment. Everything that Dawood Bay talks about in this book, the examples of his work, the kind of story threads through the work that he was doing really does paint an interesting picture. I highly recommend picking it up. It's not very long and I flicked through it several times after I finished it. If possible, try to arrange to record yourself while shooting, whether that's with a POV setup or just having another photographer friend film you on their smartphone. Now, I'm not saying you should do this every single time you go out and shoot, but I think if you do want to try, you know, engaging with people, it could just be asking for some portraits one time, try doing that while you have someone film you, especially from third person, I think. And then I think it will change your perspective on how you come across on the street. And I think it will make you more comfortable with doing those sort of things and even going in for a candid and then kind of explaining yourself after, it will make you a bit more comfortable and confident in how you come across. I know it's easy for me to say all of this, but I have the evidence to show you. And I hope you've seen that in this video. It is genuinely difficult to put into words the effect this has had on my mindset when I'm out shooting and who I was taking photos about a year ago, and even a year before that, it was even worse, compared to who I am taking photos on the street today, because there's been a significant improvement in how I present myself, in how I engage with people, and the shots I'm willing to take. And of course, I also want you to check out James on the Underexposed channel. James doesn't really feature on these videos, but you can check out the video featuring me that I did with him. And there's also many other talented photographers on there and the channel continues to grow. So go give him a watch, give him a subscribe. Really appreciate it.